I'm going to do a review of the Micron 1100 SSD. This SSD has kind of gotten its notoriety and popularity due to the fact that it's cheap, especially at its large 2TB capacity that I have here today. Um, this drive can easily be found for about $250 to $300 on sites like Amazon and eBay right now. And they supposedly have a warranty, they're fully working, and on places like Amazon you have fast shipping and relatively good returns. So I think today we're going to look at what's the catch of a cheap drive. The next cheapest is something like maybe an MX500 or 860 EVO, which are both in the um, $450 range now to 500 so they're a good amount more for this drive. So what are you missing out? Specs wise, this is a 2.5 inch 7 millimeter SATA SSD. You have SATA 6 gigabit here. Um, endurance wise, it's rated at 400 terabytes total data written um, over three years. I think it has a three year limited warranty from Micron. Um, sequential read and write speeds I think are rated about 550 read, 500 write. IOPS are I think about 90,000 on the spec page. Nothing really stands out. It's a higher end SATA SSD. There's nothing really extraordinary about the specs. It does have a DRAM cache of what I'm estimating is 2 gigs. It's running um, Micron's 3D NAND. I think it's 64 layer 3D NAND in it. And there's not too much. It's running a Marvel controller. Nothing really crazy. Let's take a close look at the insides and see what's actually hiding in this drive. So this drive is branded by Micron, which you might not have heard of before if you're not a huge player in the SSD market. But it's actually, they're quite large. Um, they own the brand Crucial, which is relatively well known for the MX500 now, and some of the older like MX300 drives, and they're just a major um, NAND supplier. They are the ones who worked with Intel to create Optane. They do quite a bit of um, stuff. They make them NAND for most Intel SSDs. As of lately, they do quite a bit. I think they make about 20% of all NAND currently on the market. So they're quite a large player. It's just they don't normally use their Micron NAND for client SSDs. This is more of an OEM drive that's designed to be built into systems rather than a desktop drive. Strange enough, this drive actually right here is identical on the inside to a MX300. Exact same controller, um, exact same NAND layout, um, and there we go. So if you take a look online at a picture of a MX300 review where they open it up, you'll find the larger sizes have the exact same board as this one. They have the exact same casing, it's just a different color, different sticker. Um, on the casing wise, it's quite boring. One screw to cut down on costs. They have a little mushy thing here which probably does not do anything thermally as it's not touching anything here. It's probably just to keep the board from shaking as much. And looking at it, we see right here is the Marvel controller, which is the main controller, SATA controller, nothing exciting. It's a four channel controller, and then two DRAM chips on either side. Looking at the NAND layout of this chip, we see those eight total chips split into um, four channels of two channels per chip to increase capacity using the full four channels of the NAND controller here. Each chip is 256 gigabytes, which is about 274 gigabytes which all together gives you about 2.2 terabytes of space. This is formatted into 2048 gigabytes, which gives an over-provisioning amount on this drive of roughly 300 gigabytes. So we have the over-provisioning cutoff between the 2.2 terabytes and the actual capacity, and then we have the um, differences between gigabytes and gigabytes due to base 10 versus base 2 counting. So there's a reasonable amount of over-provisioning. Now some of that is also used for the SLC cache as it can um, choose to write data in SLC mode for small writes. And that amount of over provisioning says if you're not doing a ton of huge writes on this, it's going to perform fine and not run into any issues. Trim like always gives you extra useful over provisioning space but with so much extra space without an extremely heavy write lo workload it really isn't needed. So now for the performance part of this review. So. I have two systems here, both running fully updated Windows 10 Pro that haven't been doing anything for a while and should be fully cached. I'm going to reboot now to show the speeds. This is running the Micron 1100 SSD. This is running a 2TB Seagate, I think 5900 RPM drive. I'm going to see the performance differences. They're slightly different boards, but it should give you a good idea of what the difference is. <clears throat> the performance of this drive is quite characteristic of basically any higher performance SATA drive. 
It'll load faster on pretty much anything, and the response times are better than any hard drive could possibly give you. A NVMe drive will be slightly faster, especially a high-end one, but the jump isn't that big. Um, another thing to note is rebooting in Windows requires loading a lot more files than a straight boot does, because rebooting forces all the services to be loaded, while um, doing a fresh boot in Windows 10 will just boot from an image. And that's why this is taking much longer. From a cold boot, um, the hard drive will actually be very similar in boot time, but it still feels very sluggish on the hard drive. So you can see the SSD is fully loaded right now, Task Manager is running, the hard drive is still thinking about it. The other test I'm going to do once the hard drive gets is application loading time. And while often of boot times, hard drives don't look that bad, and you're just like, oh, I only boot my computer once a day, it's saving 10 seconds a day, it's not worth a couple hundred bucks for an SSD. But we'll see it now, once I get logged in on the system, that programs such as, I'm going to use Edge for example in this case, will load significantly faster on the SSD than they will on the hard drive. So both systems have now been running for about a medium about a time now, and you can see the hard drive load has basically gone to almost none now, but the peaks are much higher. And when the latency pops up, we see this latency gets like 19 milliseconds for well, this one, 0.1. So let's do that Edge launch I was talking about earlier. So three, two, one, click, and Edge is loaded. And we see it's loaded on this one, and it takes another second or two. So that's not bad. We're going to do another test with LibreOffice installing. So now I'm going to do a quick install test of LibreOffice. So I'm installing it at the same time on the SSD system here and on the hard drive system here. Um, I guess I did start the uh, UAC prompt a bit earlier for one, but it's going to be fairly similar and we'll see which one wins. After finishing this test, I'm going to run a few synthetics like Crystal Disk Mark and um, HD Tune and then look at the drive via HD Scan to see what the smart data shows. But real world performance wise, we can see loading programs is quite a bit faster due to the random performance. And we see it has to load other programs as well on both. And this one's completely done. This one hasn't even shown the thing. The other thing we notice is the response time is significantly worse on the hard drive. So the SSD is going to stay snappy where the hard drive is going to feel quite a bit slower. And SSDs are just overall much better at maintaining high levels of I.O. load without slowing down. And here's the results from the Crystal Disk Mark, pretty much about exactly what we expected of a SATA SSD. One more interesting test I like to run on these drives is a file test benchmark. So here's HD Tune running it. We've been sitting at roughly 350 some megabytes a second. And the interesting test is see if it drops off. Most drives, like this one seems to be doing since it's a cached TLC drive, will have a significant dropout. This one seems to be at the roughly 500 gig mark, at the 400 gigabyte mark, which realistically for most people won't be a problem. And even when it drops, it only seems to go down to roughly 250 megabytes per second, which really is not that huge of a problem for most people. If you need a really heavy write drive, don't buy this or really any other low-end TLC drive. I highly suggest something like an Intel P3700 if you need a truly high performance write oriented drive. So what's the conclusion about this drive? Performance is fine, it's a rebranded MX300. I think the big thing that makes would make someone kind of iffy about it is the warranty. It says it has the warranty but it's sold from resellers on Amazon and eBay which aren't known for having fully warranties and you don't really know where these came from. If you need a perfectly warrantied drive I wouldn't buy it. But since it's a MX300, it should be relatively solid and handle lifetime well. And probably you're going to overall save money even if you could never use the warranty on these. I think personally these are a great buy. And I think they fit a great little spot. They aren't the best drives at anything, but they're in this spot where they're cheap enough to justify for something like a larger VM setup. Like a 2 terabyte mirror for VMs would be very well performing, large capacity, a great value. Um, Something like a video editing drive, it's faster than almost any hard drive array could be. Fairly inexpensive, and you can store even quite large projects on it. Um, something like a photo editing drive would work very well for kind of this whole mid-range. It also worked great as a games drive. It is a bit more expensive, but if you're going all out, it gives you the faster load times. It's not as fast as the NVMe drives, just saving quite a bit. So I'd say it's a great kind of just performance drive. If you're in the enterprise space and doing large data arrays, it's okay. 
you got to be aware that it's not an enterprise drive and it has its downfalls in that no power loss protection that's rated on it. It had quite a few capacitors, though it might be okay at that. But it's not an enterprise rated drive. The endurance is rated at 400 terabytes on the 200 ter um, get 2 terabyte version. But I'm pretty sure that's well under its true rating because of the fact that the um, 1 terabyte has the same 400 get, um, terabyte rating of endurance. My guess is if you put this under heavy load, you could easily handle multiple petabytes of writes on these drives from what endurance testing has shown, especially due to the large capacity where it's normally the amount of write cycles and not the total gigabytes on the NAND. The gigabytes is the write cycles times the total size. It overall looks like a good deal if you want a large SSD. Thanks for watching and stay subscribed for more videos like this in the future.